welcome to another episode of Shooting the Shit with Rachel Ann and Neil Young. We're talking all things real estate photography business, business growth, mindset, and getting it done. Here come your favorite true entrepreneurs, Rachel Ann and Neil Young, shooting the shit. What if we have a ferret on the oh Like if we're kind of in a slump, like what kind of things do you do? I'm talking like about a boob light. Straddling a power line. Nice like, photo. Okay. And I, Ooh, I need that. <laughs> I'm like red right now because I'm embarrassed. I go like this. I love it. Hey, come in, come in. Sure. Use your podcast voice. Well, <laughs> over here, I'm pitting out. Drone's like flipping to the ground. That's a great callback. Chit chat. Is that what you call that? Hey. hey, everybody. All right. Welcome to the podcast. Today, we got a fun one. We're going to do a little bit of a deep dive into HD Photo Hub. Rachel and I both use this system, right, Rach? Yep. And it is. Uh, Pretty awesome what you can do with it. Uh, a lot of time saving tools and even ways to make a little extra cash on the side, a little residual, even. Mm. Who would have thought? Yeah. So, thank you, Neil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk about that in a bit. Neil pays me, he earns me money That's every right. time he sends yeah. a job off. And, she, and she's thanking me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, well, let's, let's dive into it. Let's, let's chat a little bit about HD Photo. How long have you been using it, Rachel? Uh, I started using it in early 2020. Mm. So when I bought the client list from my friend who had moved, I knew that I was going to have a lot more volume. And at the time I was using shoot proof to deliver images. I was invoicing through Wix because I had a Wix website and they do invoicing. And then the calendar, I was just putting it in my calendar manually. So, you know, it, heaven forbid my calendar for some reason got deleted, I would lose all of my shoots that I had scheduled for the next week. And then with having other people that I was scheduled, like I took on another shooter, right? So I just knew that it was time to figure something out. I knew there was some other platforms out there. I'm like, there has to be something. So I started researching real estate photography platforms or backend systems, whatever, and found um, HD Photo Hub and Aereo and HD Photo Hub. To me, I liked the way it looked. I liked all their training videos that they had. It was just easy. They had great customer service. And after looking at both, I decided to go with HD Photo Hub. Yeah. So, and it took me, I think I spent three days, like it was winter when I set it up. I think it was January or February. And I spent like two or three days, probably about four to six hours a day, just watching every single one of their videos on how to use their system and getting yeah. it all set up and tailored to work for my business. And it was yeah. literally the best thing I ever did. I would not have survived that year without HD Photo Hub, honestly. Mm. So. Yeah, and it's there's a lot of ways that you can set it up and use things you know differently, especially in the scheduling and stuff like that. But yeah, I've been using HD Photo Hub just now a couple of months, and Rachel talked me into it. <laughs> she kept mentioning it, and I was like, well, I gotta check this thing out. And then a couple of pain points kind of pushed me over the edge. But before I used HD Photo Hub, I was using uh, a software called Wave, um, Wave Apps, I think is what it is for my invoicing. And I was using Calendly for my scheduling in tandem with Google, um, which I still use Google in tandem with the new system. And then I was using SmugMug for delivering images. And so uh, none of that was very cohesive. And I think that's one of the the big things that's nice about this it kind of brings your professional you know look up a step as well when you're kind of doing it all through the system and it's kind of like oh you kind of feel a little more legit <laughs> definitely definitely yeah and so for those of you who don't know what hd photo hub or area mm -hmm. is um, it's a back-end system designed specifically for real estate photographers so it's got everything from um a shopping cart, online ordering, uh, scheduling, file delivery. Um, there's a client portal, property websites and marketing kits. Uh, did I say invoicing? <laughs> it accepts credit card payments. So it eliminates yeah. the need for all these different platforms to get your clients, you know, scheduled and deliver the files and then invoicing them. It's all under one software in one place, which is really yeah. nice. It keeps and they organized. have also, um, 
they also have integrations too, which mm -hmm. I have only dabbled in with Google so far, but they also have one for Kubikasa, but they've got some, you know, and I think they're growing too. these integrations that can help you kind of tie in some of your other systems too. Like I think MailChimp and stuff like that, if you do any email marketing and stuff like that. So that one's great. I have mine hooked to me. I use MailChimp for my newsletter. Oh, okay. And every, mm -hmm. before I send out a newsletter, I just pop into HG Photo Hub and say, sync it. So all the new clients that sign up on yep. HG Photo Hub for, to be a new client, it registers their email and then it populates into MailChimp. Right. So then everybody who's a member in HG Photo Hub is now getting my newsletter. Yeah. Yeah. So it kind of builds you that marketing list without you having to do anything. was pretty cool. Yeah. It can do a lot of things that uh, once you, you know, there's going to, there's going to be the work up front. I'm not going to lie to you. It's going to be the work up front to get it set up. Like Rachel was saying, but once you get it set up, it's going to take over a, some daily tasks that you might be wasting, you know, an hour on here, you know, an hour there, that kind of stuff. It's going to get rid of some of that. Like, for example, I was wasting a lot of time on invoicing um, and then making sure that I invoice it and then tracking, did I invoice these people? And, mm -hmm you know, did I maybe miss some money? Cause I never invoiced something. I found like a month, one time that was like a month later and I hadn't invoiced it. Of course they didn't say anything. Yeah. <laughs> you They're know like, what I mean? Sweet. Appreciate yeah. It. <laughs> so, you know, not having to create the invoices is like fantastic. Now that I have set up where they go right through and they, they order everything in the system and, and book all at once. I don't have to do that anymore. Um, so you could, I think feasibly, I was closer to the edge of needing an admin when I had to do invoicing and some of these and some of the, you know, more, if you had to deal with scheduling, you would definitely be starting to feel the pain maybe sooner to get an admin or somebody to help you out. If you had this system and the time to just set it up the right way, you could eliminate most of the headache from invoicing and scheduling, which I think, you know, early on could, you know, at least hold off having to get an admin. Mm -hmm. And then I think also though, it, I don't think it's going to eliminate that need altogether. At some point, it's probably going to be great to have admin to do a bunch of stuff for you, but this system will be a much more cohesive tool to help that admin if they have to help out with any of these tasks and stuff like that. And I was thinking about getting an admin before I was fully set up on this actually, and just having a conversation with them about all the different tools that I had to use. And what it was like overwhelming. Oh, and then you're going to go to this tool for this. Then you go to that tool for this. And so I think it can definitely, it's one of those building blocks to set you up for growth. Uh, yes. To streamline things. Exactly. I was going to say it streamlines the whole process and it's all in one spot for yeah. sure. And it, you don't have to set up all the integrations at first. You can do start really basic with it. And then as you grow, it grows with you and right. their customer service is off the chain and just for the record we are not sponsored by them we are not getting paid to do any of this we are not trying to we do have a referral code that we will put down in the notes which is totally up to you if you want to use it but you do get 50 free credits and then we get a little kickback every time that you um order more credits but yeah. uh, you know that's not why we're doing this episode we're doing it because we love the system and it it's it works and it helps and it keeps you organized and it makes you look like a legit business and it just, it's fantastic. So yeah. And that kickback gonna... is what Rachel was uh, talking about <laughs> earlier when she was joking. Thank you, Neil, is because I signed up under, under her code. So she gets a little kickback every time I, you know, order uh, stuff in the system or whatever. It doesn't cost me extra, but she just gets a little kickback, which is cool. So yeah, that's yeah. great. Um, <laughs> You're welcome. He doesn't buy credit. You can buy credits in bulk and then you get like 30% off. Like you can yeah. buy like 500 credits. It's like a dollar a credit. Um, so you can pay like 500 bucks and then you get 30% off, which is great, but Neil doesn't right. do that yet. So every single time he sends client their photos, he, I get an email. So I know how oh, many which jobs is, Neil does a week. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> which is worth mentioning too. Yeah. You know when? I, oh, he's having a rough week. I haven't got a credit from him yet. Um, <laughs> which is worth mentioning though. There's no cost for the software up front. You right. only get charged, uh, when you, I forget what the word is in the system, but when you, when you publish Deliver. it, when you when you deliver it, when you send it to the client, then you, there's a cost for every time that you do that. So every time you're making money, there's a cost. So I really like that. It's, you know, it's not coming out of your pocket when you're not making money. So, yeah. And it's minimal. So, okay. So we're going to deep dive into what this system actually can do and how we're using it uh, and what we love about it. So let's start with the shopping cart and online ordering. So okay. this to me is like the coolest part, <laughs> one of the coolest parts. Um, so you can set up your own like online store basically where they can go in and see all your products yep. and select whichever one they want. Um, I know it's a 
Neil has mentioned, it's a great way to upsell people, right? Like they don't even yeah. know you do Twilight photos, right? Or maybe they don't know that you offer Instagram Reels as an added service. Well, now it's all there on the ordering page and they can explore it for themselves. And right. they get to kind of click and see what the total is going to be. And sometimes they're like, ooh, I'm going to add this and this, you know. They, it just gives them a lot more freedom when they order uh, to really play with it and decide what they want. Yeah. And in, so in the past, just to give you like a point of reference, in the past, uh, when I was someone inquiring about my services, I just sent them my you know, PDF of all the services I offer and the cost of them. And it's kind of overwhelming because there's all the square footage and I have to give them all that information. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they might not ever even read it, right? The, maybe the first time they looked at it, but then they've forgotten that I do drone, that I do Matterport, that I do floor plans, all this stuff. Maybe they only use me for photos the first time. So in doing that walkthrough, you can add, I recommend adding the photos. So for a drone, I have a picture of one of my drone shots of a house to sell that oh maybe it would be cool to get a drone this shot of this and also I have my my uh, shopping cart set up in a way that it walks them through a funnel so they don't see all these square footages at once which I thought might be overwhelming so instead they they choose a square footage and then it shows them uh, the appropriate things and say they choose regular photos then it'll show you know do you also want Matterport do you also want this and it shows them the rate for that square footage so there's not just a million things on the on the page to overwhelm them yeah so that's I think what, that's I do that too I just changed that in the last like six months it's been great oh cool yeah, yeah and you weren't doing so how much time you weren't doing the scheduling until fairly recently oh. right and so how much time has that saved you doing that and and, and talk about letting go of that maybe yeah. the control side of it a little bit Yes. So I'm a bit of a control freak and a perfectionist. <laughs> I'm working yeah. with a life coach right now, and, which is really fun. Just because she has to work with me, now she needs a life coach, I need right? a life coach because Neil's <laughs> driving me crazy. I can't control everything he does, so I'm going, yes, no, I'm crazy. <laughs> he's off his rocker and he's not organized. <laughs> Here I go again. No, Neil, you do like everything for the podcast, I feel like. <laughs> I do some of the social stuff, but you take care of the editing. Like you do great. So anyway, so yes, I am a little controlling. I wanted to make sure that my biggest fear with the schedule well, let me explain the scheduling let's go yeah. back okay so the way i had my scheduling set up in ht photo hub is the clients could go in they'd put in the property address and then they'd select the date they could pick three potential dates that they wanted their shoot and then they would pick their preference of am or pm for that day so they could pick like monday am choice one choice two was monday pm and then choice three would be like tuesday am and then when i got home from shooting that day or whatever, whenever they put the order in, it would be on my dashboard, which is like where you can see everything, um, kind of like a quick view. And that would be up at the top and it would say shoots that need to be scheduled. So I'd have to go in and I'd see, okay, they want Monday AM or Monday PM. And then I'd have to call my shooters or text my shooters and say, hey, can you do a shoot in Everett at this time? Or can you go to Seattle at this time? <laughs> And my whole reason for wanting to do that myself is because I didn't want my shooters traveling. Like we have a pretty big territory. So I didn't want my shooters going from like Renton, which is 45 minutes south up to Camino Island, which is an hour north. I mean, that's like a two hour gap, right? Mm -hmm. So I was nervous that if I allowed the clients to pick the dates, one, they could be going all over the place. And two, there could be these weird gaps within the schedule because I can really, I could stack them in. We had a lot coming in and I didn't have enough shooters in the spring. So it was like, I needed to utilize every single hour of every single day. So it was like a little puzzle piece to put it all together and get everybody covered. You know, so I was worried about that too. I'm like, what if they put it in the middle of the day or kind of towards the end of the day and then we're wasting like an hour that we could have had a shoot, another mm -hmm. shoot squeezed in. So um, then I realized that I was about to hire an assistant to help me with scheduling. And then I thought, okay, how hard is it going to be to teach someone how to do this? Like, this is a freaking jigsaw puzzle every mm. day. To get... <laughs> and Good we had point. anywhere from like three to 15 orders a day coming in. So like some days I'd get home from shooting and I was like, holy crap. I'd like take a picture and send it to one of my shooters. I'm like, this is insane. <laughs> like, how are we going to? Like and how crazy. long did that take you? How much time do you spend on that? Would you say it could be an hour a day? It could be more. Yeah, it was a lot. Like one of my shooters just let me have free reign. He was like, just schedule me whenever. So that was great. So between him and me, we could cover a lot of it. But then there was two others, three others that I had to call or text. And it's hard because like, to me, I'm like, I need to hear right away. Like, please get back to me as soon as possible. And like people have a life. They don't 
just jump every time that I text them. I mean, mm -hmm. in a perfect world, but yeah. So then it would be like, you know, they'd get back to me a couple hours later and I'm done scheduling. Well, now I either have it covered or I have to go back in and that takes more time. So it was ridiculous. Honestly, it was silly yeah. that I did it that way for so long. So finally I decided I'm going to, I'm going to do the Google integration. So HD photo hub, uh, integrates with your Google calendar. Please excuse my dog. She wants to go outside. <laughs> just went outside. Now she wants to go outside again. Uh, so it'll integrate with your Google calendar and it will, it's a smart calendar. So it'll calculate like drive time between shoots. Uh, you can block off times in your calendar. So it won't allow the clients to book you at times that you have blocked off. Another cool thing, you can set the times that you're available and like the limit to how many shoots you want to do a day. So like yep. if I have to pick the kids up from school at noon, I can put a break in my day on Mondays. I need to be off from 12 to two, but then I can work from two 30 till six. Yep. Right. And then I can say, yes, I'll do twilight every day of the week or only one day of the week. So it's, it's pretty cool. Honestly, it's very, and you can set your territory of where you'll go. Yeah. And the system actually, when they, when they select, they select the client, select the photographer that they want to work with. And then it gives them three options of dates and times that they could schedule that photographer. And it takes into account like what other shoots are close to that shoot. Right. Mm. So it's smart. So it's not going to suggest if it's an hour south, it's not going to put it right next to one that's an hour north. It's going to give them a couple yep. of suggestions. And then they can click in and say, see full calendar, and they can pick whichever date or time that they want. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's really robust. It can do a ton. Now, is that integrated? With, are you using that integrated with Google Calendar or just through? Okay, yeah, yeah. And so that's the other thing I like. Yeah, so in the settings, you can set up your basic settings in HD Photo Hub, like, the hours that you normally want to operate, but then you can also use it in tandem. So if you use your Google calendar for other stuff too, it's mm -hmm. still going to reference whatever you put in your Google calendar, which might have nothing to do with your real estate. It might be that you're going to Samantha's birthday party and you just throw it on the calendar. It's still going to make sure you're not scheduled for that kind of stuff. So that it's, it's pretty cool how it works like that. And I like, I like when they do the order form, it'll also suggest you know, right off the bat, dates and times that it mm -hmm. thinks of the next convenient to try and get us booked. And then if they don't want that, they just click see more options. And so I like that it kind of tries to funnel them though. And so they're right. like, oh, maybe that time's fine. Great. You know, um, to kind of get you stacked a little better. So yeah. for scheduling. You so explain that a lot more flowy than I did. <laughs> flowy. <laughs> flowy. Sometimes I just can't find the words, you know, they just don't come out. I'm like, I Bleh. wish I had flowy hair so I could have done like a Fabio hair toss. Out. I'm growing my hair out again. It's getting long. <laughs> yes, um, I think if we had matching hair, that that might help. That podcast. would be great for the podcast. You yeah. should definitely grow your hair out. <laughs> I'm doing it. Or maybe you can grow a beard. Can you do a beard? Oh yeah. There you go. Yeah. Okay. The longest I ever had my hair, I think, it was like down below my nose a little bit. Yeah. Oh. I listened to a podcast yesterday about like Airbnbs. And anyway, yep. the guy the guy was like, wow. You know, I've never really seen you in person and your beard is very impressive. He's like, <laughs> would that take like four years to grow it? And I'm like sitting there in the car driving. I'm like, man, I wish I could see his beard. Like how long right? is it? <laughs> it's gotta be like down to his belly button if that's four years. You know? <laughs> yeah, and if you have not, on to that point, if you've not checked out YouTube, we have the videos on YouTube as well. Yeah. If you wanna see how long uh, Rachel's hair is, check it out. And then my <laughs> lack of a beard, check it out. <laughs> this is Neil's starting point. He was never shaving again. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Your wife's gonna love it's gonna it. Be a, it's gonna be a lot of gray though. There's a lot of, it's all like gray and white now. It's uh, crazy. Oh my you're goodness. Getting old. Getting yeah. old. Old man. You're only as old as you let yourself be. You know I mean? Like oh. it's a shell. You might look old and like things hurt, but you're still young in your mind. You're always oh, young, you know. I might I feel be like a little, a little too young maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Nope, uh, nope, nope, nope. Okay, but anyway, so yeah, back so, on track. So this gets back on track. So, the biggest reason why I didn't switch over was just for fear of things not going smoothly. I was worried. So, yeah. and it turns and out how's like, it been going? really good, really good. That's awesome. It's, yeah. It's been and fantastic. it's probably a big relief just to not have to have like checking your phone for those texts and everything. Right. Mm -hmm. And do you know what it's done? The, the number one thing that it's done for me is allowed me to set boundaries and stick to it. Like before I was overworking myself because or I didn't have anyone to do the shoots. And I was like, well, I guess I can do it. I'll, I'll take one more. What's six in one day? You know, what's five? I can do one. I'll just work from nine to eight, mm -hmm. you know, which is crazy. Like no one should be shooting that much. That's insane. Like I need to, ha I have a family, you know, yeah. I have a life kind of. Yeah. <laughs> 
sort oh. of working on that. That's what the life coach and I are working on. Rachel, <laughs> you need to set boundaries <laughs> and you, you need to take you time. Okay. I don't know what that is, but okay. <laughs> working on sure. it. Sure. Sure thing. Sure. Sounds great. Sounds great in this like mystical mm. world that mm. you think I live in. It's right um, next to the world of unicorns. Oh, yes, yes. That's pretty. I do identify as a unicorn. So. <laughs> <laughs> So, all right. So then on the last thing I want to say about before I forget, um, because unicorns will make me forget. Um, <laughs> uh, pretty unicorns um, is in that shopping cart. Um, the other thing I like, too, is I've set it up. Another reason I really wanted to switch that from Calendly was fine, really easy to use. But one of the big reasons I wanted to switch was to promote not only my services, but the fact that I now have a team. And so it also, you can put a, a, a portrait, uh, you know, a photo of your teammates up there. And then the way I set it up is they see us there at one point and they can choose who they want to book. I think there's a couple different ways you can go about that, but that's how I have it set up because mainly I wanted them to realize, oh, well, if Neil's not available, then we can book the other photographer who's right smack. There's no way you don't realize there's more than one person in the team anymore. So you don't have to go around knocking on doors, calling people, texting people. Hey, did you know there's somebody else who can go? They see it right there. If they don't see the time they want, well, just check the schedule for, you know, Zach instead or whatever the case might be. So yeah, it's great. And for me, it's like I can on Mondays and Tuesdays, I'm off at two because I get my kids from school at three. And then Wednesdays I work limited. I only work till three because I get my husband that day. And then Thursday, like, you know, I set my limited hours and people can't book outside those hours unless they call and ask. And on occasion, I'll bend the rules, but it's helping me have more me time and I feel better all around. I'm able to stay home and work more on the business, which is great. So it's just been a wonderful thing to integrate the Google calendar. Like highly recommend it. And if you're still uh, at the point where you're doing all the scheduling firsthand. And I've even heard other podcasts talking and hearing them, they're still scheduling everything via phone call, via text and everything. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the fears you might have is, well, that gives me that kind of co- one more connection with them or to upsell mm-hmm. or whatever. You're letting the tool kind of do this work for you now is the difference. Um, and I just think it's just so much less stress, but also on their side of things, the benefit is to you is also the same benefit to your client. Ease of use is a big mm-hmm. deal. Okay. So that they can be right there at a listing appointment and talk to the homeowner and say, well, when, when would be a good day for photos, pull it up, book it right then and there it's done. No back and forth. They've got it on the calendar and that's kind of, we've talk about this once in a while about things that make you sticky. It's a little, it's a little details that they like about working with you, whatever you can get out of the agent's way, they're going to love, appreciate it. And it's going to make you more sticky, which is just like a sales term that they're going to want to use you instead of somebody else. Cause it's just easier, right? Just like if you do all the services, it's just easier to book Neil once. Mm-hmm. And it's just easier to not have to do the back and forth. And can we do this? Oh, they just book it and they're done. So it these are nice a- benefits. It was a big transition for me to tell my clients to go when I switched to the online ordering Mm. system, which I, it was two years ago, but I, I put out like tip Tuesday order online. I put it out in my newsletter. I let everybody know that I'm doing this to make it easier. And so that I don't miss things because I actually did miss a shoot with the client. She like texted me and said, Oh, we want this date. And I was like, okay, I'll put the order in for you. And then I forgot to put it in and we didn't show up. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I've never done that. That's so bad. I was like, that's another. That's oh, another terrible. really good point. Yeah, oh. I don't like putting information in. And so it's great that they put in all the information. And, and one of the mm-hmm. nice, one of the cool features too, is when they plug in the address, you know, it pops up the the relevant address and zip code and everything and shows on a, a satellite map a, with a mark even, you know, is this, the, is this the location basically? So they're mm-hmm. also verifying that they're even putting in the right address as well. So it yeah. does help. And I would definitely do typos and all kinds of things. So it definitely does help with that stuff too. They can't accidentally leave off that. Uh, it's in my case is Massachusetts and not New Hampshire, where we have a lot of the same town names and street names and stuff like that. So they have to plug that info in. So there's less, less room for error. I do like that a lot, actually yeah. simple, little, simple little things like that make a difference. I, yeah. I do have a handful of clients that I still put the order in for. There's some clients who just are old school and they don't like technology. They don't want to do it. And I don't even question it. I just still do it for them. And that's oh, just, really? maybe that's me being too nice. I don't know, but I just feel I, it's not that big of a deal. I can do it for a couple, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, so. on that, on that note, a lot, I think a, a lot of the agents are not tech savvy. 
Okay. And so there's always a little learning curve, but I will say that everybody's doing it for me. I'm not doing anybody manually, so they can do it. I haven't, that hasn't been a big thing. There was a couple people that got stuck when I first did the switch on, you know, whatever, not just the scheduling piece, but maybe like, how do I get the video link, Neil, and, and put it in MLS? Oh, it's mm -hmm. right here. You know, and they, they, once they knew where it was, they were fine after that. And, and all of that has died down. There's never, not any calls about that stuff really. Yeah. Okay. So let's move on. So one other cool thing, once they put their order in, they get an email <laughs> confirmation of the time and date of their shoe. And then they also get a text and an email reminder. You can set the parameters. I do 24 hours before their shoot. They're getting a text message and an email saying your shoot is scheduled for tomorrow at this time, blah, blah, blah. With the shooter, here's the services. So they, you know, if they need to reschedule or something that gives them a chance to right. contact you before it's too late to where we would charge them a cancellation fee. Right, so, and you and your shooter get an email that say new task, Mm, um, this yes. is your shoot. This is the address. So if you're working with a team, they're getting that email. Also, the team has a login. The team member has a login where they can go in and they can see all of their shoots on the calendar within the system as well, which is nice. So, um, so they can, you know, visualize it there as well as, you know, if you're syncing with Google, then they can look at it there too. But I think the email is nice too, that I see, even when it's not me, I like to see that my teammate got a task too. And I'm like, oh, okay. You got booked for something cool. Yeah. And then it offers file delivery. So you deliver your photos through the system. So you just upload all your photos into the system, all of the videos, the MP4s in there, and then you can add all of your floor plans, your Matterport link. You can add the video and it uploads it to Vimeo and they host it for you on Vimeo. So, and that provides you with links as well to the videos, yep. which they need the links to post on the MLS. So that's right. really nice to have that right. option. And they can also if they want to, they can download it and put it on, if they have their own YouTube channel or something, they can do that normal stuff. They always did. And you've got it all in one, it's really nice. You've got it all in one place under that listing and under that client, they can have listings. You can set up teams in the system to keep it all organized. It's really cool. Um, you can even set up different prices for different um, teams. If you had some discount for a big mm -hmm. team that you onboarded, you can set that all up in the system. There's a lot of cool stuff. There's, if there's something, you know, and, and like Richard said, the support's really good. So if you've got a question like, well, I don't know if I can use it because I give this discount or I do what for this one client, but not this other one, there's probably a way to there's set price it up. Price tiers. Yeah, there's price tiers. So like if one client gets 10% yep. off, you can set that up. So, and the ad, like what I love is, you know, a lot of these agents, like you were saying, have the team. Yep. Correct me if you just said this, they have the team and then you can like the admin that goes in and orders all the shoots and uploads oh, all the media. Yes. She can go in and order under whichever agent it is. Yes. Um, and she has access to that full teams dashboard. Basically, it's pretty cool. Yeah, so that is that is that utilize that. That's exactly. Nice. That's really nice that you can set up these admins who aren't the agent themselves and they can go in there and, and do it. And yeah, it's really cool. We yeah. talked about the credit, like you buy credits and then you don't pay for any of the invoicing services, the scheduling, the shopping cart, none of that. You pay for a download only it's three. So if you're sending photos and they're just going to download the photos, it's three bucks or three credits. And then if they want the property website and marketing kit, which we'll get into next, that is 15 credits. But again, if you buy, I think if you buy 500 credits, you get 30% off. So yeah. Yeah, and so yeah, let's that. talk about this marketing kit. Oh yeah, and marketing is, kits are my favorite. And this is a this is one of those upsells that we mentioned in the beginning of the show that costs us nothing and mm -hmm. we didn't have to do any work for. So it's kind of like your first if you don't have any residual income, it's your first thing that you didn't do anything for, and there you go, some free money if you set this up. So let's yeah. talk about yeah, tell them about the marketing. Rachel's good at this side. Um, okay, so because I've sold it a million times to my clients. A million. A million. <laughs> So with the marketing, the property website marketing kit, you get a property website that has all of your media. So you're not limited to just 40 photos like on the MLS. Uh, it hosts all your videos. It embeds the Matterport tour and your Zillow 3D home tour. Uh, there's local and school demographics listed. Uh, there's an interactive map. And there's also a contact section at the bottom so they can contact you. And it's also branded to have your logo and your headshot on there if you would like. So you can add the agents. They can add their own headshot and they can add their own logo. Sorry, I'm like pretending like I'm talking to a client. <laughs> <laughs> you can add yeah. your headshot. Yeah, no, and I think that looks really cool too. And so yeah. part, a part of it too is there's a bunch of printable flyers and and Yeah, uh, so that's these... the marketing kit. So the property website by itself is oh, just a single yes. link that they get. Part and of it has... the marketing kit. Yeah, and I always sell that to them. I'm like, you know, we take more than 40 photos and it's really hard to narrow it down. But 
on the property website, you can have as many photos as you want. And you can hide whichever ones you don't want to have on there so you don't have to have them all up. Um, and then there's also a QR code that you get. So the QR code can be printed out on like an eight by 10 sheet of paper and stuck on the signpost, or you can put it on your silent talkers throughout the home. You can put it on like the neighborhood flyer that you mail out. You know, a lot of agents will do that. They'll send out a flyer to the neighborhood saying this house is for sale. You can put that QR code right on there. And then and everybody now since COVID knows how to use QR codes. So it's a great way to show off the property. Um, and then also bringing that property website to your next listing appointment and showing your potential clients what you offer for your marketing is yes. like, they're always blown away by the property website. They're like, wow, this looks so professional. This looks so good. Right. Yep. And it's, it's just so easy for, I mean, we don't even have to do anything. We just upload the media and it like generates, we just push by. And it's yeah. Done. And when I, no when I first, back end. When I first switched, one of my agents was excited and she's like, wait, wait, we can make a website. What's this thing? And, and so she had me create one when we first switched because she didn't have any media in the new system yet. So we, I created one from one of her, the listing we had shot previously. So she could just show it off as part of her presentation. Exactly. Look what we're going to do. And so yeah. she opens up her tablet or her computer and showed them. And, you know, it's got her picture on there. It's got her, her logo yeah. for, you know, Remax and all that stuff. And it looks really great. And she was like ecstatic that yeah. this is one more thing that would help her look better than everybody else at the listing appointment to win the appointment, mm -hmm. which is important because the more appointments they win, the more times we can go out and shoot. So, yes. I mean, that's a really big deal. There are different templates that they can use too. They're not stuck with just one layout and one look. There's different colors. There's different a bunch of different templates they can choose from in there, which is cool too. So they yeah. can customize it. And talking um, about tech savvy, a lot of these people are not super tech savvy. So a couple of nice features in there too. On uh, inside the marketing kit, the website is one of the things. But then they've got all this part. Another part is the printable flyers, but also their um, their templates for like social posts and stuff too. Like a lot mm -hmm. of agents we'll use Canva or something like that to do like just listed. And, and so it does all that stuff. There's templates for all that stuff and you just download it. You really don't have to do much. So for people who aren't tech savvy and don't want to learn some other tool to do those things, they can make it really easily and use it on social media. You, they have like a Pinterest one that's like all formatted for Pinterest, all that kind of stuff. So yeah. And they have one um, for Instagram and one formatted for Facebook. They can yep. customize the colors, the fonts, what they say. They can pick literally the whole gallery is right there. It's just a drop down and they can pick whichever photo they want to go on that template. And then there's also like a teaser video, which is a quick like 30 second video, which just filters through the photos super fast, which I love. Like each photo is on the screen for a half second. So it's just quick. It's engaging. That's the one I always tell them, like, post this one if you're going to post any of them. Mm. Um, and then there's yeah, a longer point. like version that's probably two and a half, three minutes long. And it's just a slow. No, too, I know. I'm like, no, it's too no slow. one's going to watch that. No, you one. Know, I got I got to tell people about the teaser one, too, because I don't think I yeah. realized that because, yeah, I only saw that slow one. I'm like, oh, boy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. The teaser. That's awesome. I'm going to tell is a good one. For sure. Cool. And then printable flyers. There's a bunch of different templates of flyers they can choose from. There's some that are double sided, single sided. And then that integrates with some kind of print shop where they can order. I can't remember what the name of it is, but they can order online. The client, the agents can if they yep. add that app integration. So yeah. And a lot of these resources, you know, some of these big teams, they're already set up doing a lot of this stuff for years, but especially an individual who's not a part of a team, this stuff is life-saving for them. Right? It's so much easier than trying to figure out all this stuff on their own. So yeah. it, that really helps uh, a lot of the agents I work with. It helps them a bunch and they're excited about it. And then the, did we say that the benefit to us on this one is that we can make up the price on the marketing kit? Oh, did we yeah. Say that? Yeah. Oh, okay. You don't have to give it to them for free. You can charge them whatever you want. Yeah. You can yeah, charge you can them give 200 it... bucks if you want. I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't do that. You'll never sell them, but. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah, make you just, you know, uh, there's a small cost when they order the small cost to us. So you just mark it up a little bit like you do with all things that you sell and, uh, and they order that and you, you get some money when they order. It's always fun when I see that it came in like, oh, and it's something they can renew if for some right now it's not going to happen, but. You know, in past years, they might renew a listing for a second year or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. They can always renew it, but it's hosts that site basically for a year um, for that marketing thing. Uh, the website's good for a year. So that's pretty good for what they yeah. to have a website for a year. It's amazing. Totally. Oh, one thing also the property website has is a phone number that they can call and it can be on their signpost with a phone number. And then they call that phone number and it gives them all the property details. 
So oh, and it's cool. a lead, it's a lead capture too. So they can, um, it, that when somebody calls that phone number populates in their client dashboard and they can go in and see who called that number, which is pretty cool. And then they can call them back. They're like, Hey, I didn't even know that was a thing. That's awesome. I have yeah, to look at I that don't, one. I think we used it on one of the listings we did and I had nobody call. I called to test it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know any clients that have actually used that, honestly, but I have seen, <laughs> haven't cool. you seen that like text to this number. And when you text it, it sends you the, a link to the property website on your phone. So you just click in and you can see it. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, no, that's, yeah. that is cool. Neat. Yeah. Um, cool. So we talked about shopping cart. We talked about scheduling. We talked about the marketing kit. Client. Oh, well, let's talk about the client portal. Cause I feel like this is huge. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the client portal is basically where all of their shoots will live. So if they have a past listing and they want to like pull up a couple of pictures from it, they can just pop in there and all of their shoots are in there right. with quick links to download photos, quick links to view them. Uh, everything's just in one place. It's very organized and they can pull up their past invoices and things like that. So it's just great for them to keep everything organized. And then again, they can upload their headshot and their logo. So that shows up on all of their branded materials. They can yeah, order and I think, a photo shoot from there. What else can they do from there? I think, yeah, but there's, I mean, it doesn't sound like much, but it's actually a big deal to for them to, to have the portal to log in and see all of their stuff in one place and have it be organized rather than searching for these mm -hmm. emails. And where was that gallery that Neil sent me a link for a month ago? Um, when I mentioned that to them, they're like, oh, Cause like the first time it's just one, they don't understand. They just see one when they get in there, but like, Oh, I'm so like, so I just tell them like, so, you know, in the future, assuming we work together, you know, a couple times more over the year, whatever the case might be, all of those new listings are all going to be in here in this login. And in a month from now, if you need to pull up a picture for whatever reason, it's all right there. And they're like, Oh, I get it. Awesome. Because they have to set up a login to start. And that's set up in the, when they go to do, I, I've created a quick little how-to video of like, here's how to use the shopping cart. And I showed them, you know, if you haven't, if you haven't, if you're a new client, you just go right here, click on the red wording that says, you know, create a login or I forget what it says now, but um, they click on that and then they enter their, enter their information. And the great part about that too, is now you've got their email and stuff like that too. As soon as they create an account, whether mm -hmm. they ever book with you or not, you're creating a mailing list for yourself as well, which is a really nice benefit too, that you can advertise to them over the year. And eventually hopefully they will book with you if they didn't that time too. So yeah. Anyway, but yeah, the portal I think is a, a nice ease of use thing that I think will keep them coming back. It just looks professional too. I've had a lot of people say, Oh my gosh, your site's so professional. Like everything looks so polished right. and great. And I'm like, thank you. Like right, my colors, you can brand your whole shopping cart to your colors and your fonts as well. You have to, <laughs> uh email them and let them know or message them let them know that you want to use a different font because it's just like standard fonts but they can change the fonts for you yeah i haven't done that yet but that's that is cool um but yeah that, that's their i think their perspective too is when they see that it's like oh like i think a couple of my clients mentioned something to the effect of you're doing well huh like oh yeah mm -hmm. look at the improvements you're doing and stuff like that's pretty cool you know so yeah i'm figuring this out Ooh. yeah it looks good. My life easier it and looks oh, good. oh at the end of the day, it just makes your life easier. It makes their life easier. So one of my favorite, I don't know, did we mention this? I don't know if we mentioned this, what? but the invoicing. So it allows you, as soon as they put an order in, it creates an oh, invoice. Duh. And then they have to, you can set it up this way yes. or not, whatever you want, but they have to pay before they can actually download or view the photos. Right. Or you can I, say they can download, they can view the photos, but they can't download them until they pay. Right. So I, I have mine I set believe... up where they can see it but they can't download them until they pay so i'm guaranteed to get paid and i don't have to go chase my clients yes. and it's like well if you want your photos you'll pay. that is probably <laughs> one of my favorite features actually i can't believe i didn't think to do it because now i think that's the thing about it is now i don't deal with the invoicing at all that i've forgotten that pain already yeah. Yeah. and but yes that was one of the biggest pains was having to send reminders hey this invoice hey this invoice and they've mm -hmm. already downloaded their photos so you really got nothing to hold over their head Exactly. And it integrates so. with QuickBooks. So if you have an accountant or you're doing your own accounting in QuickBooks, um, which I would highly, if you're planning on scaling or growing, just start using QuickBooks now because it's going to save your life later down the road. It's so great. It has good reporting. And yeah, I yeah. actually have no idea really how to use QuickBooks. My accountant does all of that. So 
Um, <laughs> I just didn't like, do ugh. QuickBooks. I'm I'm doing the Stripe integration, but it processes okay. all the payments, right? So it takes a small percentage, just like anything that processes a payment for you. Mm -hmm. um, and then, it, you know, just sends it to my bank account. So I just get deposits coming automatically in my bank account, which is nice. But yeah, I, I thought, you know, I bet QuickBooks is probably more robust, but it was one more thing I wasn't ready to, to learn yet. So do you <laughs> use I, Stripe for like a report to then put it into your accounting system? Or what do you, are you saying that Stripe I know, I've never with? used I've never used an accounting system. I've never okay. used QuickBooks or any of that. I've like wave just did a simple report. That's all I ever needed for okay. taxes was to just show my sales versus my costs. And basically would just gotcha. deduct all the fees and would just mm. show a, a list of that. And that's all I ever did. So that's the same thing that that Stripe basically does for me. And I honestly haven't got that far into the reporting. So I don't want to talk a lot about the reporting for Stripe because I I'm not knowledgeable in it yet. I've just okay. know that I, I've seen the basic reports that, oh yeah, I got these payouts and here's, you know, list of all the payouts for whatever months. And I know it does that kind of stuff, but uh, yeah, I haven't dive, I haven't dove really far into the reporting on that. So it versus QuickBooks, I don't know what the ups and downs are yet. So, yeah. 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 I know my accountant has my login for Stripe and they have my login for QuickBooks and they have my, a login of their own for HD Photo Hub. So they yeah. go in and figure it all out. <laughs> and it's like this magic report at the end of the month. Yeah. And they just raised their prices on me, but they're worth it. I was like, fine. <laughs> Everybody's raising their prices. What's new? Yeah. And no, I will not, be too, first of all. I'm year. not there yet. I'm, I'm not there yet. If I had a phone call with an accountant <laughs> this past year to give me some advice mm -hmm. about stuff, but that's about it. Hey, yeah. That's a step in the right direction. Yeah. Um, okay. So it also, HD Photo Hub integrates with Dropbox, which I have not utilized this just because when we get our photos back from the editor, I want to crop them and clean them up and tweak them a little bit before I upload them into HD Photo Hub. But there is a way when you get them back from Dropbox from your editor to automatically upload them straight to HD Photo Hub. So if you're out on the road shooting all day, you get your photos back from the editor, there is a way to quickly upload them into HD Photo Hub while you're on the road, which is cool. I just yeah. have never used it. I haven't done that part either. I did see that. I haven't done that yet. I think I tried to do the uh, Kubikasa part, but I haven't, I haven't figured out. I want to, I'm not exactly sure if it only just syncs in your tasks in Kubikasa that, oh, you've got this upcoming floor plan for this address, or if it does, or if it, I think it may pull them directly into floor plans, but I'm not hundred percent sure, but I have to look into that. But if it did pull them directly and that would be, that would be pretty cool. It's one less thing to have to go download and then put it in, you know, yeah, right. So. Yeah. yeah, I know. I looked at it and I thought I was, I, I don't think I did it right. I don't know how to use it. <laughs> Need to probably figure that out. Cause that would be and, great if it just pulled straight from Kubikasa in there. Cause there's nothing, well, you do kind of want to look at Kubikasa before. Make sure yeah. the rooms are labeled right and everything's looks. It's okay. harder with, what do you do? This is, it brings up a good question. So Kubikasa, if you didn't figure it out already, is a, what we both use for our floor plans and dead easy to use Kubikasa. But what I wanted to ask you is, so I do that for my own shoots that I was there firsthand and I scanned it. But when my other shooter does one and I look at it, I've got no idea if this layout looks right. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Well, yeah, that, but I mean, like sometimes there'll be a weird label on a, on a, it's a closet and it says like something different. Like it's not labeled oh, yeah. as a closet, something like that. Or yeah. they've I've, done some weird names on things before I've seen. Yeah. Like a, but you yeah, can they, say yeah. the names when you're in the room. Like there's a button called where you can click and say bedroom. Yeah, they <laughs> called they called the basement the washroom or something. And you're like, yeah. what? You're like, no, <laughs> that's the, or you want to call it the rec room, not the bonus room, or you yeah. know things like that. Little little things. So, anyways, so one new thing, I, uh, HD Photo Hub. Oh added yes. Today was the ability to receive tips from your clients, so they can now tip you, and you can do a percentage mm -hmm. or you can do a dollar amount, which is pretty cool. So I just did. activated that and I got to figure out, do the tips go to my shooter or the tips go to me? Let's see. Well, I, I wonder if it tracks, it, it must shooter. track, it must track under each shooter, I would assume, right? Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like the tracking of it is what's going to kill me. And then we have to pay taxes on those tips, right? Mm, and then I have yeah. to pay. So I got to figure out how that works. And there's a processing fee for the, when they use a card. So they got to take a little bit out for that to cover that. Um, mm. We're paying the shooters out so i got to figure out tracking on that i'll reach out to him and see how i can track that because that would be cool if like the shooter did a good job they deserve that tip you know they did the work yeah so yeah maybe the agent i thought they went like so far above and beyond for whatever reason throw a little money their way yeah, yeah. that wouldn't that wouldn't hurt 
Nobody's feelings would be hurt there. <laughs> right. But like, I mean, you were kind of hesitant to adding this tipping thing. Yeah. I mean, I'm hesitant just because I, I don't want it to, I, my only worry was I, I don't want it to feel like you're, like you you're asking for more money. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. it's not like, it's not like a, I'm, I'm undercharging. It's like, and they're like, you know what? You really don't charge enough. Here's some more money. Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> but well, so that's my, that's my only fear there. And then, and then yes, you would have to be cautious about where the tips go because yeah, you definitely have to make sure that the tip went to the shooter and didn't somehow, I, I don't know. I'd have to look at how they set that up, but yeah. cause but like being a times, waiter. How many times, Neil, when you're on the site, do you go above and beyond for your clients? Like you're helping them move the garbage cans. You're like straightening up the pillows or you're like, going doing more than what your job requires and i think it would be nice to have that option i mean when when i order a coffee i tip my coffee gal for making me a coffee and that's a service provided you know yeah. and honestly the coffee tipping i have a hard time with coffee tipping like a whole dollar for a three dollar coffee that's a huge tip <laughs> yeah no Sorry. i know maybe i'm just can... being cheap i don't know <laughs> i don't know i don't yeah the coffee tip that's a that's coffee the one is like well i don't I mean, know well, it's I not like, like you have a choice to make it better or worse like when we're eating at a restaurant and i'm tipping my server my server can do a good job or a bad job right and i will tip yes. based on the service we get if we get i'm pretty lenient but if it's terrible i'm like you're getting 10 percent, 15 percent, like bare minimum right yes. usually i'm a 20 percent tipper but you know, but yeah, with coffee, guess... it's like, what is she? Was she like super happy and nice that day? She complimented me. Like, I don't know. <laughs> like, how do you, there's not a lot of ways to mess that up. I don't know. Yeah. Do it I don't know. Yeah. And I guess that's part of it. It was, I, I, I've never thought of the in this, this industry as a sort of tip one, but, mm -hmm. but thinking about having, and, I, and that was more for my own self, but thinking about when you mentioned my other, like if I have a team and they do a good job that somebody might give them a tip, then I, I felt differently all of a sudden like, oh. Well, yeah, I mean, that would be cool that my team could make some extra money. That's cool. So I don't know. I'm, I go back and forth on it. But, yeah, it's definitely different for our industry. I feel like most photographers don't don't get a gratuity, right? So, Neil, I'm going to life coach you real quick just because I'm in life coaching. Do it. Okay. So let's go back to what you said where, like, this is my life you, coach you were not okay with you receiving a tip. Mm. But when it came to your shooters, mm -hmm. you, were, you thought that they were deserving, but you were not. Why do you no, feel I like think it, you are not deserving of a tip, but they are? I guess maybe it's because I feel like the boss. I'm not sure. And it's like a different role. You know what I mean? Like if we're in a restaurant, the manager wouldn't get a tip, but the server definitely would. So but I guess I was still doing the same service. You're yes, still I still do it. Service. Yes, I do still do it. I don't know why, but it's a good, <laughs> it's something to think about for yeah. sure. You got to explore that, Neil. Explore I don't think it's I don't know what I'm, to say now because I'm not think, a life coach. <laughs> no, no. But, I would think this is yeah. no, this is a good point. I don't think it's because I don't feel I'm deserving. Okay. I just feel for me, it feels weird. Yeah. And I don't know. I, it doesn't, I don't know why it doesn't sound weird for somebody else, but for me, it does. It's just yeah. my own, my own thing on it. I don't know. If somebody else is like, great, I got a tip. I'm like, yeah, great. You got a tip. I don't know. Yeah. But for me, I'm like asking for a tip. I think yeah, it's the it does asking feel a little for sleazy. a tip. I don't know. It feels it's a little asking. weird asking. Yeah. So I don't know about you, but like since COVID in Washington, at least when you go out to eat, they now have like these handheld little credit card process things that they bring to you. You don't like sign a piece of paper oh, and it. get the that's envelope it. anymore. It's yes. like this little square portable register thing where you put your card in. Right. And then yes. you have to put your tip amount in and they sit there and they wait for you to finish. Mm. And That's it's so it uncomfortable to me. I'm like, can you please go away? Like, <laughs> I was awkward. trying to think what it, what scenario it is that there's some kind of tipping thing that I always feel like I would never tip for this normally. And I don't really want to, but yeah. it's asking me to do it. And I feel like under pressure by people around that I should put a tip, right. but like, it's a service. I can't think of where it was, but yeah, one of those things that they spin it around, they're like, want to get a tip? And I'm like, no. for what? <laughs> I know, like Subway. Subway Sandwich does that. They're like, you can add a tip. And I'm like, yeah, it's I just worked not... at Subway. I mean, I should know that like, there's a, I, it's a service, but I don't know. It just seems I don't silly. know either. I'm like, it's, it's fast food. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> it, it's funny though, but we have it in our heads that certain industries, they get a tip, like, yeah. you know, but some don't. It's weird. And I don't know where they came from. So maybe it's just something we need to change and we can also get a tip. You know yes. what I mean? Yes. But, you know, like movers, 
they get a tip. But mm -hmm. uh, the FedEx guy doesn't get a tip. True. What's the difference? <laughs> yeah. I don't, we don't see the FedEx guy very often. <laughs> you know, he might Maybe have a big, tough. heavy package that he put yeah. a lot of effort into not breaking on the way over, but we never this tip him true. for it. Yeah. Uh, FedEx is listening and they're going to add the, did you want to add a tip? Did you get your package and it wasn't damaged? Maybe you should tip your driver. I'm going to be like, this tipping thing is going too far, people. <laughs> you get paid enough, okay? <laughs> uh, yeah, so it'll uh, be interesting to see if we get tips. I We should revisit that because yeah, that would be I, I, just, it, I just said, yes, turn it on today. So we'll see. Go for it. But yeah. see, I think on, along those lines, the the other thing that's happening here is what's cool about the system is they are a system that adds new features mm -hmm. and sort of evolves and grows it's not static the fact that they just added this new thing it's cool they do listen to their clients and they add features when they're needed you know the only downside to that is it is a very robust system so you probably will have to you know message support for a couple things how do i do this but they will give you the answer and help you with this so don't be afraid to ask mm -hmm for what your scenario is so that you can get the help because there's a lot of settings in here to figure out. So, but once you, but they're there because of how versatile it is to do the things you want to accomplish. So. Yeah. And watch their videos on how to set it all up and just have it open in one browser and then do it in the other and just go along with them. It's really not that hard to learn. It's pretty easy. One thing I suggested to them a while ago, I'm sure I wasn't the only one, but I remember this like probably six months or a year ago when a client would change dates for a shoot, Mm. There would be like four line items, you know, like stills, video, Matterport, floor plans. You'd have to go in and change the date for each one individually, oh, which yeah. was annoying. It just took so long. So now when you change the date on one, it asks you, do you want to change the date for just the service or for all four? And mm -hmm. it's like all four and then it's done. And I was like, yes, they finally, they did that. So oh, yeah, you I can did see also, that. they said like, I, when I talked to them, they were like, we're always open to suggestions. So if you have anything that you see that would make it easier for you guys, like, please let us know. So anytime you have an idea, just message them and let them know. And they might actually integrate your idea. So and they're right out of your, your home state there, aren't they? Yeah. They're in Spokane. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is like so. four and a half hours for me. That's cool. Oh, and to that point, you have settings even to control whether or not your agents are allowed to reschedule their booked time. Oh so yeah. There's a reschedule button. So I, I allow my clients to do that because so, I'd rather they just book it for the new appropriate time and I don't have to deal with it. And then that slot's open and somebody else can book it. Mm -hmm. And I think you've got some parameters on how far before the shoot that they could do that kind of thing and that sort yeah. of thing. So Mine was 48 hours and today I just switched it to 24 because I was like, they can switch it within 24. That's, fine. That's what I do. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So I think that is all of it. I don't know if we probably missed something, but. It's kind yeah. of, you know, HD Photo Hub in a nutshell. It's amazing. Yeah, there's a lot. I mean, there's a lot more to it that I'm, that I'm sure we didn't cover. Just talking yeah. about from our own firsthand experience and how we've used it. So in the in the description or somewhere, we should put referral uh, code, right? So if yeah, they wanna... we'll have both of our referral codes and you can just decide who you want to support more. Me or Nate. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Let's make it a competition. <laughs> yeah. This no. is a huge competition. No. Whoever has better hair, I'm losing. Oh. Um, <laughs> Whoever's but, um, funnier. Yeah, yeah. No. Oh. Whoever's funny. Ah, uh, that's a yeah. that's a tough race too. I don't I'd, think I'd I'm, like to, I'd like to I think that mm, you're pretty funny. Thanks, Neil. But um, I think you got this one for sure. Yeah. Anyways. So way. and then also one thing we've forgotten to say in the past is we could really use you guys giving us um, a rating on whatever your your podcast is that you're listening to. Give us a five, five star. Five stars. We five like star five stars. Rates. If you want to give like two stars, just don't. Yes. <laughs> Save those, save, save them till those. they add up till you got a couple more. And then eventually you got you five go. stars and give them to us. There you go. Perfect. No, we would love a review. It would help. I don't know what it helps with, but it would help. So people know that we're, yeah. we're awesome. <laughs> if you, if you found any of this helpful or amusing, throw us a five star. You don't have to tip us just a five star, but maybe yeah. we'll start a tip for the podcast. Ooh, Cause we oh. literally do this for free. We, do. For free. That, we are making zero I got no money problem for the podcast. That would be that would be great. Maybe we'll set up Patreon and, and let us know if you'd be interested in us, in us setting up Patreon or something for some maybe bonus uh, <laughs> stuff to hit the cutting room floor. And there is stuff. Bonus <laughs> content. Coming your oh way. My gosh. We have an episode we're gonna pull launch that's a complete waste of your time, but it's entertaining. So <laughs> <laughs> look out yes. for that one coming look soon. Look out for a bonus episode coming soon that's just yeah. just us chatting ridiculous stuff like we do, but this is 
just a that fair chunk of it yep absolutely yes. okay cool well thank you all for uh listening again and we really yeah. appreciate it and uh hey i hope we see you again too hope we're gonna see you at the convention right yes pmre coming up see you in there a see you months. there all right that'll all be right. fun cool bye now bye. Bye. Bye.